So if we want this to be a category three and attack again, now we're gonna have to deprotonate this alpha carbon a second time. Happen in this circumstance because that would have five bonds. One sec. So you make the OH fall off without turning into water? So this will be our final product here. But you don't turn the OH into water first? That's right. We're not going to turn the OH. Uh, you're asking why don't we protonate it first? Yeah. Um, why do we have uh, this? Uh, and the reason is, um, so you're asking why doesn't this protonate and then fall off? Why well, conjugation? Pardon? Conjugation? Yeah, that's part of the answer. So let's go, that's good. Let's go through that step by step. First of all, we can't protonate this because then that would make it positive, And we're under basic conditions. This is something we've talked about in the past. This whole reaction is happening under basic conditions. Remember, the aldol condensation is only base catalyzed, not acid catalyzed. Yeah, but we've been protonating things. Not to make them positive, only to make them neutral. Uh, right. We've been protonating things only after they were already negative. We've only been protonating things after they were only ne already negative. Under basic conditions, you're not going to protonate something that's neutral because that would make it positive. And as we've talked about in the past, under basic conditions, you should try to keep all your intermediates neutral or negative. Um, so it's okay to protonate something that's um, already negative, but we can't protonate this oxygen because it's neutral, and then it would end up positive. So we're going to have to accept having a fairly bad leaving group here. We saw that when we learned about the aldol condensation, that when we do a category 3 aldol condensation, we do have a hydroxide leaving group. Um, and you actually gave the right explanation for what the driving force is for that. What is the driving force that allows us to kick off this bad leaving group the fact that we're forming conjugation here, alternating single and double bonds. Nature likes forming alternating single and double bonds, so this allows us to kick off uh, a pretty poor leaving group in order to get this conjugated result over here. I feel like I saw an example where it couldn't be continued into aldol condensation. Mm -hmm. So would that be... When, when you couldn't do the second part of the aldol condensation or when you couldn't even do the first part? Well, yeah, condensation, the leaving of the... A oh, leaving of the hydroxy, mm -hmm. right. Well, for one thing, um, remember that in order to do a category one aldol condensation, you have to deprotonate the alpha carbon once so it can attack. So if you're going to do a category three aldol condensation, you have to deprotonate the alpha carbon twice so it can attack. So it, the alpha carbon needed to have started with at least two protons. If this alpha carbon had only started with one proton, then it could only do the first part of the aldol condensation. So for example, if this alpha carbon over here had been If it had two methyl groups on it, it can only do a category one aldol condensation. It can deprotonate once and attack once to form something that looks like this. But then it wouldn't have any more protons left to, de uh, to deprotonate and do the second attack to form the double bond. So that's something, we've, uh, that's something we saw a lot when we were talking about alcohols and amines. Um, in order to do a category three, you've got the, the nucleophilic atom has to start with at least two protons. In order to do a category three, the nucleophilic atom has to start with at least two protons, so it can deprotonate twice as part of the two nucleophilic attacks. If you're only starting with one proton, the best you can do is a category one, where you only attack once. So does that seem like what you were thinking about? Okay. So that's one reason why even with heat, we might not be able to do this step. But in this case, we had more than enough hydrogens because we started with three hydrogens. That is something that we have to start looking out for. It's not good enough to find the alpha carbon. You have to count the alpha hydrogens and make sure you have, so sometimes there might not be any alpha hydrogens, and then you can't form an enolate on that carbon. Or even if there are alpha hydrogens, if there's only one, it can only attack once. So we have to pay, and oftentimes people miss that because the, the hydrogens aren't drawn if you're doing bond line notation. So it helps to actually ask how many hydrogens are there. So this was just a, a detour. In this case, this was a methyl group, and there were plenty of alpha hydrogens. So it needs Three or two? It only needed two. Okay. Here we had more than we needed. Okay. Here, so this it's would still... It's going to end with even one. What's that? It's going to end with one. Yeah, in this case, it still has one left. Um, so it, uh, in order to do a category three aldol condensation, you have to have at least two hydrogens. But three would work as well. 
All right, so that gives us this Robinson uh, emulation here. So we managed to get all the, the steps here on the board. And again, at some point, it might be really useful to number every single carbon to make sure you're not adding or dropping carbons. Here we ended up with two rings. Since we already started with the ring and the Robinson emulation made a new ring, notice that the new ring is what we said. It's a six-membered ring with a carbonyl and it's alpha, beta, unsaturated. Uh, and again, obviously, this is one of the carbonyls that got attacked. Now, where's the other? Uh, here's one of the alpha carbons that did the attack. This is the alpha carbon that did the aldol condensation. Where's the alpha carbon that did the Michael addition? This is the alpha carbon that did the Michael addition next to the former carbonyl. So this used to be unsaturated. This used to be unsaturated over here when this attacked. This used to be this group over here. So if we were going to try to do, so this would be a good synthesis problem too. If you were going to do this as a synthesis, you have to be able to say use that trick you were talking about to think about what the fragments look like ahead of time. That's not so easy. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, should we do a synthesis problem with Robinson annulation or should we move on to something else? Maybe we should just do one quick synthesis problem. We won't do the whole mechanism, so it won't take us too long. We can try out that trick and see how well it works. This is pretty likely to be on the test, I think. So the job here is to propose a synthesis of this molecule using a uh, Robinson annulation. From anything? No, really. Yeah, well, from things that would do a Robinson annulation. Okay. Where does no be from like yeah, alkaline and ketone? Well, I guess it would have to be, or you couldn't really do a Robinson okay. annulation. Well, like, I mean, like the most, like an acetone or a formaldehyde it doesn't have to. Be yeah, it doesn't like have to be the simplest sequence. possible thing. Okay. That's right. So you can use any reagents you want that would give you a Robinson annulation. So I didn't give you any trouble at all. Actually, I think this is the reaction we just did. It was just turned on inside. That was the reaction in the book. The key thing, again, is to remember that before the alpha carbon attacked this carbon, it was unsaturated. That's the part that people tend to forget, since this was the alpha carbon that was doing the Michael addition. And also, people forget that this was an alpha carbon, because this doesn't look like a carbonyl carbon anymore. We have to remember that this used to be a carbonyl carbon before the aldol condensation. So I find it very helpful to label the two alpha carbons and to label the former carbonyl carbon. I'm not labeling this carbonyl because it's not really acting like an electrophile, but it's really helpful to label this carbonyl carbon. Um, and I think you guys are kind of using that trick that you learned in class, and I think that works pretty effectively here as well, too. Okay, so even without going through the whole mechanism, now we have a pretty good way to see this. Now, of course, I made this a little easy because I told you that this, we were going to use a Robinson emulation. On the test, they might just say, do this synthesis, and they won't tell you what to use. But how would you know that you might use a Robinson emulation here? And yeah. Six-membered ring with a carbonyl that's alpha-beta unsaturated. Oh, it's always going to be six-membered? Yeah, there has to be a six-membered, if you think about it, the Robinson annulation always makes a six-membered carbon ring. All the, all the atoms have to be carbons. A six-membered carbon ring with a carbonyl that's alpha, beta, unsaturated. That will always be part of the product from a Robinson annulation. Although, actually, I guess that wasn't quite you right. You also have an O, can't you? Like an O? Um, not in the ring. It could be attached to the ring. I'm not sure what you meant by the O, but yeah. There have to be six actual carbons in the ring. It's going to be a six-membered carbon ring with the carbonyl that's alpha, beta, unsaturated. However, um, does that make sense? There is one complication. How would you do this synthesis? 
or what would be one possible way to do this? So in we this do case? that and then just add H2. Exactly. We could add these. And then we can use the reaction we learned about last semester of hydrogenating the alkene. So actually, even if you don't have the alpha beta unsaturation, you might still use a Robinson emulation as long as you think about hydrogenating it at the end. So even if it's not alpha beta unsaturated, you just want to look for these six-numbered carbon rings with the carbonyl group. Those can be made from Robinson emulation or Robinson emulation followed by hydrogenation. Because maybe this is maybe with the double bond, this was a little too obvious. 